Admiral's log. The German Navy has been dealt a series of devastating defeats, and they're now reeling from the pressure of war on several fronts. Our invasion of German New Guinea is ongoing, and we are making steady progress in getting a foothold on the island. As we continue to push forward, I am filled with a sense of urgency. The war has escalated, and it is vital that we maintain the momentum and take advantage of Germans' weakened positions. We must continue to strike at their naval forces and disrupt their supply lines and communication. I've been closely monitoring the situation in the home front, ensuring that our resources and supplies are sufficient for continued advancement. I've also been working to boost morale of sailors and officers, reminding them of the importance of this war and the noble cause we're fighting for. I know the road ahead will be challenging, but I'm confident in the abilities of my sailors and officers. Our new battleships and battlecruisers are the strongest in the Pacific, and will be instrumental in our efforts to gain control of the seas. With their advanced technology and firepower, we will be able to take on any challenge ahead. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 4 of the Japanese 1910 campaign. I am happy to share that the Empire of the Rising Sun has grown a little larger. We have gained control of German New Guinea, or should I say Japanese New Guinea. The naval success or the naval invasion was a success, and because of that, I now have a brand new province. This is going to boost my economy, although it is not that much. But hey, it's a little bit more terrain the Japanese can use in order to launch further operations. I mean, Australia is looking nice this time of year. Uh, their armed forces are negligible, but directly engaging Australia might be a bit much. Um, also, <laughs> the whole of Eastern Australia has less income than German New Guinea. Okay, so 1.4 million people produce less income than 239,000? Huh. Okay, don't ask questions about Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It might not... Might not work in your best interests. Anyway, um, there are more territories to get. The Germans are still here and they got the Bismarck Archipelago. So, or Archipelago, I never quite know how to pronounce that. So let's uh, pay the Germans another visit, shall we? And let's see if there are further provinces that we can gain. I'm not sure if we can already launch the invasion or whether we just have to wait one more turn. Um, Germany, naval invade. Choose a province. Bismarck, yes. So we're going to do another invasion. And this is going to deprive the Germans of further territory. Ideally, I'll eventually be able to land an invasion force here. But the armed force here, the army, is 66,000 men. Which is substantially more numerous than what they have on the archipelago, which is 2,000 guys. I'm just trying to deprive them of um, nations or territories here, so I don't have to worry about them stationing a ship here and there, which will then allow them to start plundering my shipping, which happens in North Oceania. They haven't been doing that here, not actively. They don't have any uh, power projection, whereas I have apparently 1.9 million. But they have been doing that here in the LOC, where I'm not sure how they're doing it. Because I have 314,000 power of naval projection, but they do not. So, how exactly the Germans keep plundering my transports here, I don't know. Um, I think it's an interesting turn of events, but right now, it shouldn't be happening anymore. Because they might have pulled back the last of their ships, or they're repairing their ships over here in Tsing Tao. As for my ships, I wanted to do an overhaul. As per my own rules, I'm not allowed to do a new design, but I am allowed to do a refit. And I want to refit the Yumi class of heavy cruisers. Because these guys are from 1910, or, well, potentially a little older. And I do believe that we can make them a little better. The refit time is only going to be one month if I change nothing. But of course we're going to change some stuff around. What I am looking for is uh, the rangefinder. They have the stereo 2. I can go for the coincidence 3. This is going to give me 10% base accuracy. This doesn't give you base accuracy, but more gun aiming. No, actually less gun aiming speed. 
uh, but longer range bonuses, which I don't think are going to be that useful. Acoustics are an interesting choice, but I don't think I strictly need them because right now I'm not really dealing with any submarines, nor am I really in trouble with torpedoes because nine times out of ten, the torpedo range is so low that you're going to see that thing coming anyway. If you're within four kilometers, it'll be painfully obvious there's a torpedo coming. Uh, most of the time, even I spot that. What I do want to upgrade is their 17-inch torpedo. Uh, can we find it here? This thing does about 920 damage. We're going to upgrade that to the biggest, which is a 19-incher, which then upgrades the damage to 1,557. Of course, not counting any damage mitigation that they might have. And apparently, installing a bigger torpedo tube really doesn't take any time because refit time is still a month. As for propellant, the same um, TNT-1 or picric acid. This is if you're building an HU spammer. This is also most likely if you're building an HU spammer, but it also helps with shell pen. This one does not help with shell pen, but it does not make your ship as likely to blow itself up. So I'm going to stick to TNT-1. Now, I quite like the heavy shells and I quite like the AP cap shells because this allows me to really quickly cut through German cruisers. Soft-capped HE shells are no, kind of middle spectrum. Um, when it comes to just setting a whole bunch of fires, I think nose fuse is a lot better. This 25% HE shell pen, I'm looking at these guns, the 3.4s, which is what I have the most of. I got 22 of those. So for, let's say, shorter range encounters with HE, uh, this works, but it generally won't pen a lot. I mean, one inch at 5,000 meters, if you hit that, it's not a lot. So we're going to switch that back to nose fuse and just set these things to try and burn as much stuff as possible. Uh, standard ratio is fine. Increased ratio HE secondary shells? No, we're going to fire max HE from the secondaries. As for armor, let's give them crew three. Let's try and reinforce the barbette. Anti-Torp is going to get upgraded because I have a tendency not to do a great job dodging them. Uh, that... Wow, that's an interesting bug. So, I'm not sure if you caught it, but at some point I went up to two months. If I switch from a single hole bottom to a double hole, a double bottom, so there's a second inner hole, that takes less time. Apparently... Building a second hull around the ship, or dividing up the ship into an extra hull, takes less time. I don't know how that works, but uh, that's an interesting bug. Anti-Flood, I'm not sure why we're running Anti-Flood 1. And Citadel, I want to have a better underwater protected deck. Because these are not my design, uh, but I do quite like how they perform. They're pretty good ships. And those 11-inch guns, they might only be Mark III, but they pack a hell of a punch. They reload in an, an okay amount of time. It's almost 50 seconds. I mean, it won't win any prizes, but it packs a lot of punch. If this AP shot pens, it can generally cause multiple units of flooding, which tends to immediately shut down the enemy warship. Depth charges, yes, I will bring it. If I have enough room, then I'll also bring this because these kind of go hand in hand. This is detecting submarines. This is killing submarines. And since these cruisers are going to be around... Well, a lot. I have a lot of these things. I might as well use them. As for the four weight offset, uh, that's not great if I want to relocate a turret. Relocating a turret doesn't cost you any time? What sort of miracle workers do I have on my shipyard? And where can I find more? Does the same work for the engine? Yeah. Just tearing off a whole funnel and everything that goes underneath and rebuilding it somewhere else is apparently not a problem at all. And with that, I can immediately dispatch all of the four weight offset issues. So this is the, uh, let's say the Yumi Mark II. Although don't you dare, don't you dare rename that because if you do, you're going to find that the game doesn't allow you to upgrade it. As for price, uh, these things cost me 16 million honestly have no idea which is the newer one. The game doesn't tell me. <laughs> That's useful. <laughs> okay, this is the old one. Uh, these things cost 14.7 million. These things cost 16.4. It's fine. 
It's a steal, especially if I can upgrade these in a month. That's a massive upgrade in capabilities and firepower for just 30 days in dry dock. I mean, it's one turn. All I have to do is bring a couple of ships back insofar as they're not already home to, to uh, get some repairs done. So, my heavy cruiser fleet. Gentlemen, insofar as you're here, I got a surprise for you. The Yumi class Mark II. We're going to refit as many of these as possible. going to take me one month and about a million and change. But I will barely fill that in my budget. So, next objective. Invade over here. And then make our way over to here, to Tsing Tao. But I'll probably need a lot more firepower in order to make that... Uh, oh, and it's now 72k army force. To make that 72k army force go away. Because... Whereas I'm doing a naval invasion here, and I did it here, and they didn't have a lot of army force. Um, over here, they got about 10 times the number. 12 times almost now. So I'll also need a lot more tonnage to make those guys go away. So this might take a few months. It seems that the, the Germans aren't exactly happy about my naval invasion. So we're going to be up against a couple of their forces. First, it is going to be my battleship Hio. One of those awful Nagaski class, which have no armor. Against the battleship Lothringen of the Thuringen class. Double 14 inch, sorry, 13.1 inch guns, which are on par with my 13.9s. But I only have three and they get four. They're slightly faster by six knots, which is in this era quite a lot. Uh, trained crew, many bulkheads. I say we're going to go on the offensive with the smaller ships and have the battleship well, kind of try and draw attention to itself. Although, it's really difficult to make the AI focus on one ship. Because the moment that you put a torpedo launcher on a ship, the AI tends to go haywire and immediately wants to try and go after that specific ship. Because if it has a torpedo launcher, it must die. And it must die immediately. So, uh, the DD seems to know where it's at. If you are newer to the game and you don't know how to find the enemy, just turn the AI on control on and the ship will immediately go on a pretty much straight line towards the target. So this ship, there we go. It was on a direct course towards the battleship. My plan is however not to have the Mitsuki immediately attack, rather have it spot as it is doing right now. So my other ships, uh, not exactly my cruisers, but the other guys definitely, um, have these guys engage the enemy from afar. Interestingly, this ship has already taken a couple of hits. And the damage that that's taken so far has not been mine. Uh, I'm not sure whether I hit it or not. Apparently, I hit it once. I hit it once, but it didn't cause the loss of 83 crew. That's because the ship... Or sorry, because the game just renders the damage, if you will... The moment, uh, or the damage that's already taken, the damage is rendered the moment that you have your first hit. So it's like the heal was attributed that hit, but it didn't exactly deserve it. It didn't deal instantly uh, 83 crew members. It just, no. Not happening. Okay, keep those off. There's still 8 clicks out, and I need to be at suicide range. 4 kilometers. But if we do get to four kilometers, we can immediately pump out three torpedoes. Which is something I rather like to do. Now by the time that I'm recording this, and especially by the time that you're watching this, you might have seen that Dreadnoughts, according to Steam, has officially left early access. You could argue that that means that the game is now fully released. Uh, make of that what you will. The devs have said that the moment that it loses the label... Um, that it's considered fully released, which I suspect it now is. It's going to be uh, supported for another six months. Whether that will be enough, um, I kind of doubt. Because there are still quite a lot of things going on. Like the cruisers, apparently, insta or well, um, taking less time to get themselves overhauled if you add a secondary hull. It is stuff like that that makes me go, huh, ready for release, huh? No, not ready for release. It is released. <laughs> that makes it worse. So, yeah. It's stuff like that. That really makes me question how much exactly they're going to be fixing the bugs. But, hey, let's uh, let's check in in six months, shall we? And in the meanwhile, I'll just keep playing the campaign. 
So far, they haven't wiped it. So far, it hasn't crashed on me. And yes, we've seen some fairly weird stuff, like the, the whole bug. But beyond that, not so much. Now, take note how the battleship now takes drastic measures against the destroyer to try and deal as much damage to this guy as possible. But because my destroyer is pretty swift at 31.8 knots, it's having a really hard time actually hitting it. 3.5% chance to hit with the 11s, 1% uh, with the 4.3s. But what it is doing is slowly turning itself to starboard, which is where I have a nice little surprise for them if the surprise group would actually speed themselves up. So I'm kind of pushing a battleship with a destroyer. That's a nice bit of accuracy you got there, sir. They do have a lot of bulkheads, many bulkheads, so my chances of immediately blowing this thing up with three torpedoes is limited. Especially considering my torpedoes are mostly located on the stern. Nice shooting. Um, and I don't like it that it's in a turn. The ship's probably not doing its full speed anymore because it's been turning so much. Yeah, it's doing 12 knots. I am doing 31 knots. So I can very easily pull alongside, but at this range, their chances of hitting me are increasing. And i got to be fairly swift about my attack right now. So, three torps out. Now we're going to move away. And this battleship is going to have a fairly rough time of it. Unfortunately, they all landed at the same spot. Uh, one was a dud, another one was a dud, and one actually did damage in one compartment. So well done, Mutsuki. Uh, that was appalling. And you don't have any further torpedoes, so beyond being a target practice for the battleship, there's not that much more that you're actually going to be useful for. So I'll just try and keep it around, try and keep it alive to have it distract the battleship. Even though I've expended my torpedoes and really not any kind of a threat to the, the battleship anymore. Well, I might take off the front tower if at all possible. The superstructure doesn't have a lot of armor. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't do that before. That hurt. Alright. Eo, we got 12.7 kilometers on you. Cruisers into range. It's going to be about 8 clicks. Let's speed up. Noteworthy when it comes to uh, fixing bugs is that you, at the start of the version, so 1.1.0, um, if you had your own ship selected, there was a bug that caused a lot of lag. For some reason or another, it looked like all the side-mounted weapons were causing issues with FPS. That's been fixed. So it's not like they're not doing anything. It's not like they've completely pulled away from the game. Stuff like that is getting fixed. Load high explosive, because this armor is probably a little too good. Yeah, we've got 14-inch main belt. Oh, you damaged the engine. You magnificent beast. Okay. That means you're going to be doing even less. 16 knots dropping quickly. Are you also in a turn? Yeah, you are. They've lost 9% of crew, so before they're going to be completely devoid of crew, it's going to be a while. Chance to pen with the cruiser is just about zero. That's why I've told them to fire only high explosive, so I can knock off more crew. Potentially damage some modules on the deck. But uh, I'm not really holding my breath as to ability of actual damage on these cruisers. I mean, I've done 24. The Naka has done... Two. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's done 5.5. Just done two hits. Oh, that is annoying. Um, yeah, ideally, I would push with the Heo, but because... Oh, no, no, no. No, shit. But because the battleship is a lot faster than mine, it's not like I'm going to be able to catch up to it. Ooh, that was another good hit. Itsukushima is going to have to try and back off. No longer flooding. But all of its torpedoes are gone, so its chances of actually dealing damage not great. It's going to be down to the battleship versus battleship, is my estimation of the situation right now. I do have some pretty good accuracy on this battleship. 32%. 
This guy's 10 kilometers out. Considering the era, I'm very, very happily surprised about the accuracy of my own battleship here. 29%? I like it. 31? Of course, it promptly misses that. Flooding is not encouraging. My range now, still 4. Yeah, we haven't upgraded these torpedo tubes yet. They're the Mark II. I believe we have access to the Mark III now. We tell that to the Naka, which is not going to be able to get into range anymore. Um, we keep damaging the main guns as well. The four clicks out. You're now nine and a half out. Destroy the secondary. You got no ammo for what? HE? Are they fully AP? Yeah, they got max AP shells. That's an interesting choice. <laughs> My cruiser cannot keep up with the battleship. Oh, this is a sorry sight. Okay. Try and close the distance. Ooh, you did. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. You really did. Okay, pushing in with the destroyers and the cruiser was not a great idea. Let's see if this ship now turns around, or if it's going to continue to kite away. I'd really like it if I could damage an engine, potentially knock out a superstructure, <coughs> to try and mitigate their accuracy and their speed. See, there's more damage to their secondary tower. They damage me? Yes, obviously, but yeah, the chance depends really not that good. 20%, they cannot damage the turrets, that's important, but they can apparently set a flooding. What? Let's try another casemate gun. What have they got left, gun-wise? We've destroyed a few guns here and there. Is that 11 inch out of commission? No, it's not. I think we knocked out one port side casemate. Oh, sorry, no. Yeah, we knocked out one port side casemate. Maybe a 4-inch? No, not even. Not even. No. This guy is definitely keeping me at range. The problem that I am facing is that I only have 22 HE shells left. Ooh, destroyed another secondary turret. That was a 7.5-incher that died. I don't have enough HE shells left to really slow this thing down. Unless I cause flooding now, and unless I cause an engine damage, the Lothringen is going to continue on her path. And probably successfully with the draw, having sunk a light cruiser, badly damaged another, and killed the destroyer. So, in her current situation, she's winning. Which does mean that I'm going to need some faster ships. And as I've said before, I've only allowed myself one actual design of a ship per year. And right now, um, it's still 1911, I think. And I've already used that on designing a new... Battlecruiser? No. I designed a battleship and maybe a heavy. But... I'm not allowed to design a new ship. Anyway. We've got three HG shells. Our accuracy's dropping. Range has increased to 11.4. No, we're gonna have to reschedule this battle, my friend. It's unfortunate for the light cruiser and the destroyer. I kinda died in vain. My ability to do damage at this range is just negligible. But I cannot properly pen that ship anymore. So let's try and disengage. Find the Lothringen another time. When it comes to victory points, the Germans will probably take a few thousand home. That's fair. Uh, they did win this fight. And I don't mind them... Yeah, one and a half. I don't mind them getting a few victory points. Because I have... 40k more than they do. So if they catch up a little bit... That's fine. It's not that bad. I do hope that eventually we're going to end up with ships like that. Especially long barreled ships, most likely. Yeah, but do medium damage? No, it's not true. Uh, we didn't medium damage them. 
They already had damage, and they are just now at medium. Okay. Oh, they also ran into a mine. That might explain what happened to them before. All right. So they are... They're still taking down ships in the Yellow Sea. But they're also losing ships in the Yellow Sea. The West Indian Sea, the Baltic, the North Sea. <laughs> no, I'm not taking orders. Ah, there we go. Bismarck Archipelago is where we are fighting. Um, oh, I got 5,000 tons that I need to get there. All right. That should be enough. And especially if we send the secondary group as well. I try to merge these guys, but they might have too much crew on them already. Uh, it's October 1911. What's the other battle here? Ooh. That's not good. That's intensely not good, because the Okinawa... She has pretty good guns. She has eight 12.9s. But her issues are many. You can see she has a lot of flaws. Especially chance of fire is bad. Flooding, bad. The battleship doesn't have as many guns, but it has more potential damage using those 13s. This is going to be a, a very interesting fight. If I can survive this, that's a bonus. Especially considering my battle cruisers have a... <sighs> they have a proclivity of blowing themselves up. Let's put it that way. Not great ships. Rephrase, they're god-awful. They are really, really badly designed. Somebody sent them in. They're just awful ships. Whoops. Uh, Okinawa, don't join that group. So. An enemy battleship has been spotted. I'm not sure if it's already run into a mine. If it has, that would be wonderful. Because that means it's a bit easier to manage. It might have already taken engine damage so that my other ships can catch up. And it's full health. Lovely. Okinawa, slow yourself down to full speed. Uh, everybody, we're going to turn hard to starboard because we can see them. They cannot see us. Use this momentary advantage. Try and get as much damage in on them as possible. Without taking one hit to a battlecruiser and having them blow up. Come on, we got overwhelming firepower. At least, oh, we've been spotted. No, it's on fire. Sorry, it's, we haven't been spotted. Uh, you can stay your course. Sane, I need you to stay there. Tenryu, just hold. I'm sure as hell won't be able to pen this guy, so we're gonna have to try and burn it down. You're getting a bit too close there, dude. You're. What's that? It was 24 knots? No, 21 knots. So I could, yeah, they spotted the Okinawa now. Crap. Not good. Okay, we're going to do a hard turnover. Try and once again get our concealment back. I don't like the odds. Lost sight of Okinawa. Excellent. Um, if you don't like the way the table is set, throw over the table. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep my distance... Use the stealth advantage. Ah, damage to main gun, several fire set. They cannot see any of our ships, but they do spot the Okinawa again. 99%. Do we really have a very low chance to pen, or... 11%. Yes. We really have a very low chance to pen. Their chance to pen us is excellent. This is why I need to keep my little boat, not so little boat, away from the enemy. Because they will fuck me up. Their crew is 1.1. They got spacious quarters. Oh, boy. Um, spacious quarters, many bulkheads. Yeah, lovely. The Zaringen does need to go. It has a fairly serious amount of presence in this area and can threaten my merchant shipping. Lost side of Okinawa. Excellent. 36% chance to hit. Go on. Missed everything. Yeah, I know you're turning. It's fine. Eight clicks. Their escorts are doing a piss poor job of trying to spot my group. 
Right, I need you to slow down. You're going too fast, and so are you. I'm only doing 20 knots with the battle cruiser. Oh shit, you see me again. So your visual range is about 7, 8. Comes to main guns. Are your main guns really so poorly protected? No, they're not. Get it. No, oh, they can't see me anymore. We're good. Oh. <laughs> We're accidentally hitting something else. Uh, range. 4.8. You could see me only at 4.8? Wow. So for you, those light cruisers come out of nowhere. But the moment that you do see them, you murder them. Destroy the main gun? Wow, look at the amount of fires that the Zaringen has going. Keep adding to that misery, please. And we're going to now push in with the DD. I'm going to tell that guy to turn around and go. At the same time, I'm going to have the Tenryu accelerate, and you're going to leave. And you're going to push in at flank speed. Coming in right from the bow. That means that the Zaringen is now fully going into panic mode. Because they just spotted the destroyer. There's your little escort. Go right at it. That's a nice torpedo, but I don't care. Let's hope I don't take as many dud torpedoes with me this time. If that hit, this would have been a really dead destroyer. Corpse out. One, two, three. Turn away, turn away, turn away. Maintain your position to spotter. Hit, hit, hit. One dud? One dud. Two hits. Very good. Well done. Stop firing at the CL, you idiot. Sanae, move back. Tenryu. You're also in a pretty good position here. Uh, you should be aware that Lubeck has torps. That is a consideration. You're going to just leave. I'm trying to... Yep. Draw attention with the Tenryu now. So that my battle cruiser has more time to damage the Zaringen. Oop, there's more. Oink. 45 damage. Blocked. Fire damage though. One mechanic that I'm not properly exploiting yet is the feature where ships that have taken damage are less resilient to future damage if they get hit in the same spot. What that comes down to is, if you keep hitting the same block of armor, it's going to grow, well, weary, if you will. And as that happens, the armor gets easier and easier to pen. So my chance of actual penning the main hull of the Zaringen, the lower hull, so the, the belt, improves. That's the plan. Go back a little, smoke yourself up. Do a donut, whatever. Just make yourself difficult to hit. Zaringen has lost what? 5% of crew, not even. Increase the flank speed again. Because you're probably running at best 17 knots. After you're flooding, that's pretty respectful. Um, you've lost sight of the Tenryu. That means you've definitely lost sight of the battle cruiser at this point. Parcel pen fire. Their light cruiser is now tr coming back to try and spot me again. I could try shooting it up, but it's it's a fairly small target. I'd rather not. I could pen it, though. Yeah. Oh, now I lost sight of them. Interesting development. Uh, let's tell the DD to also withdraw. I don't need it in here anymore. It can definitely serve me again with one of those suicide runs later on. Okay, they can't see me anymore. Let's continue dancing in the dark like this. Quite like it. This is free damage. I mean AP cell though. Just for the heck of it. Angle is decent. Missed. 21% chance to hit. Slow down. Oh, you spotted me. Oh boy. Don't kill me. Miss, 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 miss. Secondaries on the Lubeck. Tenryu out. No, we're not doing anything. 
We're not doing anything. Ooh. That's bad. What the hell? 65% we're getting nothing? Come on. Show me you can hit something. Notably, the battleship. It's more like it. Destroy the secondary gun. So that's, what, another seven and a half that just bit the dust? Oh. Oh, right, your 11s are secondary guns. Oh, that cruiser got a little in the way. Tender to you is so fucked. Okay, turn your torpedoes to normal. Just launch at the battleship what you have, because it's probably going to be your last act of resistance anyway. And if we can force the Zadigan back in the direction of the Okinawa, that might actually be a better course of action. Oh boy. What did you hit me with? 11.3s. Come on, get them away. Before they blow up on the own ship. We got starboard launch. Oh, starboard launchers. Not sure if it's ready. Don't die. You dead. Yep. That was fun. Um, we're gonna take down this light cruiser now, with the hopes that if the light cruiser dies and I get to a respectable range, I'll be able to spot them without them spotting me. That's not helpful. Done. Aha! Uh -huh. Excellent shot. That knocked out their superstructure. The main tower is gone, and with that, their accuracy. Not strictly something you need on a light cruiser, because their guns generally aren't that dangerous to a battle cruiser, but in this case, they are. Because the Okinawa has no fore or aft belt, or fore or aft deck, nor superstructure armor. Which is why I've taken so much damage from the likes of a light cruiser. This thing has done 464 damage. It's ridiculous. Blocked? See, when the AI starts building better ships than your navy has, that's problematic. Another torpedo away, but the Lubeck's already changing. Hmm. With the number of enemies that Germany has, I'm not even sure if I need to really defeat them. And by that, I mean if I can just cause more economic damage to them by having them force a battleship repair. I could be more devastating to them. It could be more dangerous. Just lost all my torpedo launchers, or rather I ran out. Missed. This thing's charging me down with what? 22 knots? Yes, 20.7. Own ship, 22 knots. Uh, normally, I'd say I'm gonna make a stand and fight, but if your battlecruiser has no armor... I mean... If I can make a stand, I'll die. If I turn the ship broadside and face a light cruiser, I'll die. And this seven and a half million dollar ship will take down a forty-two million dollar battle cruiser. This, however, is promising. More oh, fires being set. Turn a bit, because I think the battleship is either out of range or doesn't have enough accuracy to make anything happen here. If we can overwhelm their fire control, or sorry, their damage control parties, then that would also be a big bonus. Please hit something. Still has torpedoes. That's also a menace. Especially with the damaged rudder. Okinawa. Hit something. Look at that. We're taking on flooding. From the hits of a light cruiser. Four and a half clicks out. Slow down. Although I don't think you're going to need any further help. Guns to pen. Pretty decent. Oh, damaged secondary tower. Are they turning back? They are. Right, I'm gonna call this one another... Let's get the fuck out. Because I don't want to lose too many more ships. Oh, I did take home some victory points for trying, I guess. 
for the mild damage that I did do to the battleship. But at least it's something. Could have been a lot better, though. Oh, well. That's what I get with the ships that I currently have. Now, you could make the case, why don't you just refit those ships? Because they're awful. Uh, yes, they are awful. But that's kind of their charm. They're so bad that I'm not trying to overhaul them because I want to make it a challenge. What I am doing is building new battleships and they'll be out in 13 months. When those new battleships actually hit the front lines and start using their capacities, I mean, eight 13-inch guns, as opposed to what I have now, which is three 13.9s. I'll have a lot more firepower, and I'll actually have armor, which will be a really big benefit. As for my torpedo research, uh, not much is happening. We are still prioritizing it. I am running maximum on all sliders. Uh, this is not helpful, though. This is because I'm fixing up a couple of battleships now. And I think Germany won't last a whole lot longer. They still have an economy of 50 million, billion. Um, they keep losing transport, so their economy is crashing. They only have 45 active ships. I think the battleships that they do have are with me. Um, heavy cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers, submarine. They're probably all back in Germany. There's not going to be that much more. My tonnage is twice theirs, which normally I would say does really inspire confidence. But considering the fact that my battleships and battle cruisers which make up for a lot of tonnage, are so bad. I'm not too sure. Right? I'm not too sure if it's going to go that well. We'll just have to find out. So join me next time as we're going to be continuing the war against Germany and hopefully actually be able to knock out a battleship or two and complete another naval invasion. Because my plan is complete the naval invasions on the Bismarck Archipelago and uh, whatever else we can gather from them. And then when the peace treaty comes, get this. So I don't have to push them out of the Kiao Chao Bay. I can just claim it myself. Look at the army forces, 122k? They raised 40,000 or 50,000 men in three months. It's a lot of conscripts. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for the next.